First of all, this is the ALM Royal Assembly. I want to welcome you all. I want to welcome Mami and Jetty. The Bible says we must honor our leaders. You are welcome, Mami and Jetty. And I want to welcome all the princes and princesses in the house. It was never by mistake to be here. This is where you belong. This is a place where you will pray and worship and get answers to your problems. Forget of whatever you have done at home, what you have left at home. Concept. Let's only focus on the on Jesus today. Invite the Holy Spirit to be in you so that everything can go smooth. Amen. This is a month of partnership. Let's partner with the Lord today. Let's not leave him behind. Let's hold on to his hand. Let's walk with him wherever we are going. Amen. Amen. As I said, this is ALM Royal Assembly. And the church is planted on John 10, the stand that said, The Lord has come. <laughs> the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus has come so that we may have life and life in abundance. We have visions, values of the church as well, which is uh, our one of, let me start with the values. The value of the church is I love worshiping, I love prayers. And that is what we are starting with in the church. That's worshiping and prayers. To put yourself in the spirit. You know, if you don't do that in the morning, it's like you are not in church. If you don't start with worshiping and prayers, it's like you are nowhere. Amen. We have teamwork, excellence, integrity. We have seven values of uh, in the uh, Royal Assembly. And the mission of the church is to declare order of God in the lives of his people. Amen. 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 And then we have visions as well. One of them is to plant churches, to teach the un, to preach and teach the unalterated word of God. So if you come to Real Assembly, we only use the Bible. We don't use anything else. We only believe in Jesus. We only believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which means all we are doing is according to the Bible. Amen. With those few words, let me welcome you all. Feel free in the house of... No, I forgot about my love. Kingdom kids there behind. <laughs> the school has started. I trust that the, all of them are now back to school now. Eh? Amen. So feel free in the house of the Lord. This is where you belong. Do we have anyone new in the house? Anyone who's visiting us for the first time? Princess, blessing, just to give this out to them, please. Thank you. You just fill it in, and once we are doing offering, you come and put it in the basket of the offerings. Thank you.
Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Can we welcome Princess Florida to come do the offerings for us?
is our Alpha and our Omega. He is the King of Kings. Our way maker, miracle worker. He is the one we are here for. Just worship him this morning. Kayaba Sanda, Lord, you are good, you are mighty, you are great, you are an excellent God. No one else compares to you. You are our healer, our sanctifier. We are here for you, Lord God. And we just want to say, receive all the glory, receive all the honor, receive the Heavenly Father God, the worship of this.
Jesus, red in my affairs. Jesus, red in my life. Because you are the king of Zion, the lion of Judah, red in every area of my life. Just open your mouth and begin to talk to God. This moment, Jesus, we worship you right in your heart. Psalm 
verse 19. If you see it, can you just quickly read? I just want to explain some few things to you. Hallelujah. Just to explain some few things. If you see it, can I hear your amen? amen. Psalm 68, verse 19. Anybody just quickly read for me. Yeah. Uh huh. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Who daily loads us with benefits. Aha, uh -huh. just hold on there. I hope you see it in your Bible. Blessed be the Lord. Who does what? Who monthly? You see monthly there? No, daily. Yearly. No. Say daily. He loads us with benefits. benefits. When you belong to a group or a club or a society, they will tell you there are some benefits that you get because you belong to this group. Now, as a child of God, the Bible says every day God loads us with benefits. And those benefits pertain to the life in abundance. Which means on the 1st of May, there was a benefit. 2nd of May, benefit. 20th of May, benefit. Today, 30th of May, there is a benefit for today. And the Bible said, the Lord, Lord. How many of us have private bankers here? When you have a private banker, you just see, thank you, man, or you just call your banker and say, on this account here, I want you to load certain amount on my card so that I can use it. But God is not just a private uh, credit worthiness. He loves you daily because you are his child. And if you wake up and you end the day without experiencing the benefit, it means somewhere along the line, there are benefits that belong to you that are hanging in the air. Because according to God, every day he loves you with benefits. But if you don't experience it, something is happening. As you see now, I want you to pray that, Lord, every benefit you have loaded to me in this month of May, I want it to manifest. I am not entering into you without receiving every benefit you have released to me. Benefit of healing. Benefit of sound man. Benefit of health. Benefit of prosperity. Benefit of victory. I receive it. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and speak to God. Speak to God in the name of Jesus. Every benefit you have loaded, they belong to me. They belong to me. Let it manifest. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not preaching yet, but I just want us to deal with certain stuff. Because to the month of June and experience the fullness of God. Jesus was talking to them the other day and he says, you who is evil, if your son asks for bread, you don't give stone or you don't give snake. How much more your father in heaven? He loved us so much that he gave us his son. He did not withhold his son. How much more will he not give us other things? And I want you to go home today with that assurance. When you wake up in the morning, you must tell yourself, I have been loaded with benefits for today. You don't need to struggle. You say, as I step into this day, at the breaking of this day, there are benefits loaded into my account. All I need to do is to withdraw. All you need to do is to swipe your card. All you need to do is to make online transaction. Because the benefit has been what? Loaded. So if you feel headache, pull out your prayer card. Swipe it. messing up with your mind. Pull out your prayer card and say, God has not given me the spirit of my fear, but out of love and summer, swipe it. The benefit is there. Amen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. When you see things not going well, just pick out your card. As for me, I'm not using debit card. I'm using spiritual credit card. So if you don't know how to pray, you will not be able to know how to use your card. If the enemy come and scare you and you begin to cry, then you forget your pain. Hallelujah. You go into a prayer place and you, the enemy say, who are you? You dirty, useless. You forget your pain. You forget that Jesus is your pain. He has died for you. denied you, I stand in the car and I command it to be released in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank God for this month and we are getting ready to go into the next month. Hallelujah. And we will be fasting and we'll be praying the month of June. I just want to get this out of the way before I go into the 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 the, 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 the the word, the message for today. The month of June is a very exciting month. Hallelujah. If you have if you have started this journey with us in this year, you can see as we are moving from glory to glory, grace upon grace, and you see the hand of God moving. Hallelujah. So are you ready for the month of June? Hallelujah. Please help me project the month of June. Hallelujah. As we welcome the month of June. Is the month of June, and I don't want you to miss out. This is going to be our month of favor. It means as you enter into the month of June, every labor has come to an end. You are now getting everything by favor. connection. You have been crying to people. You have been working so hard. The Lord said it ends in this month of May. As you step into the month of June, favor is going ahead of you. Favor is opening the door. Hallelujah. So we'll be having two powerful days of prayers and fasting and it's going to be a wholesome fasting and prayer. Do you know what I mean by a wholesome fasting and prayer? We are going to pray and fast from 6 to 6. Amen. Not 6 to 3. 6 to 6. Hallelujah. So you better begin to speak to your mind, to your body, to your intestine and say, I am in charge here. Yeah. Speak to your stomach. I am in charge here. Yeah. I am going into June and I am in charge. On that you don't have permission to come in. Yeah. I am fasting awesomely. Yeah. Full. I am going all out. I'm going out full. Or how do you say? I'm going all out. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's go to the word of God. Are you ready for the word of God this morning? I do not intend to preach. I just want to explain something and we're going to pray. I believe you are not tired of praying. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to explain a few things and we're going to pray. First scripture we're going to read is Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It's too much. It's too much. Bring it down with you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and still remaining in the book of Acts we read chapter 10 verse 38. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Amen. Acts chapter 1 verse 38. I'm reading from the Amplified. But you will receive power. Somebody say power. power. And ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witness to tell people about me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and even to the end of the earth. Amen. So if a kingdom kids are they already in their church. Okay, they are already having their church. Okay, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Now, Chapter 10, verse 38. One, two, three, go. How Jesus anointed Jesus of Nazareth 
with Holy Spirit and with power. And he went around doing good and healing all those who are oppressed by the devil because God was with him. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. Speak to us this morning in the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. So this morning, I want to briefly talk to us about empowerment for success. Empowerment for success. Hallelujah. So the purpose of this message is to prepare our mind to enter into a realm and understand what the Lord is busy doing in the house this morning. And after that, we are going to spend time to pray. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. Knock, it shall be open. First, Peter, First John chapter 5 verse 14 also said, This is the remarkable decree of confidence we have as believers that if we ask anything of him according to his word, he will do it for us. If we ask anything according to his will, he will do what? He will do it for us. Remember I mentioned that God has loaded you with daily benefits. Anything you ask, as long as it is according to his will, he will do it for you. That is the confidence, the remarkable confidence and assurance we have. And that's why we're going to pray. And as I go into this message, I want you to prepare your heart to pray. So how to pray with faith to receive. Hallelujah. Prepare your heart to pray with faith to receive. Hallelujah. Empowerment for success. When you talk about empowerment, empowerment is the authority given to someone to perform various acts or duties. When your supervisor is going on leave and he calls you as a subordinate and he will say, sign this document on my behalf. He has what? Empowered you. Hallelujah. When we go to police station, there is a department there where they certify documents. Most students will understand this. You will certify your document. And those who are looking for employment, you certify your document to show that this document is what is original. Now, when you go to that person, that person is sitting there with a seal. It's a human being like you. But when he takes that document and take that seal and put it on that document, that document is accepted anywhere. It means the government of the nation approved that this government document is authentic. So what the government has done to that police officer is that they empower that police officer because the president cannot certify the document of everybody. The police commissioner cannot stand in Ventuk and wait for everyone around the nation say, bring your document at the chief inspector. I will certify. So what he does is he looks for people and who have been employed and he give them the authority. And he say, I empower you. Anyone that brings a document to be certified, you don't need to call me. Have you gone to the police station with a document and they look at you and say, I want to call the chief inspector? They just put a stamp on it because that person has been empowered yes. to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. So when God empowers you, he is not coming here to do all the assignment to win the souls, to silence the devil. He has empowered you. So that whatever you declare on earth is what is established in heaven. Hallelujah. What is empowerment? Empowerment is the process of becoming stronger and more confident in life on a job or in relationship. We hear of 
gender-based violence in our nation. And what the social worker does is when the woman come and they get into the case, they begin to ask the woman, what is going on? The woman will say, he, he doesn't give me money, he beats me. And they will find out that that woman cannot earn an income. So what they will propose is that we need to help this woman to be economically empowered. Because every time this man beats her up, he comes to report and the man is saying, now you took my name to the police, I will withdraw my benefits. And the woman will go back to the police station and withdraw the case and the abuse will continue. But when that woman is empowered economically, she will become better and confident in life. Now she's able to buy and sell and earn her own money. And the man come back drunk and say, I want you to say, enough is enough. And when he say, I'm not going to give you money for the children, she will say, go and perish with your money. Because that woman has been empowered. The Lord want to empower somebody this morning. That when the enemy comes knocking, you will rise up and you say, I am a child of God. I have the blood of Jesus. The devil, I speak to you. Pack your bags and leave. Am I talking to someone? We are looking at the word empowerment. Because when you get empowered, something has been deposited in you that makes you to be comfortable, makes you to be confident, and makes you to get more results than you used to get when you were not empowered. Hallelujah. When God called Moses, we were talking about Moses last week, and he was giving all the excuses. The Lord said, I will be with you. That was an empowerment at that level. My presence will be with you. So that when you are going, and you know somebody bigger than the enemy is behind you, you will misbehave. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I remember when we were young, you would go out, you'd be naughty to the uncles in the streets. Maybe you, you are playing the soccer ball on the street and you will kick the soccer ball away into the bush and the owner will start to chase you. Ordinarily, you cannot stand the owner of the ball. He will beat you mercilessly. But you remember you have a mother at home. So when you, when he start to chase you about to beat you, what will we do? You pick, remove your shoe. You begin to run. When you run, you run to your mother. And you meet your mother there outside washing clothes. You stand behind your mother. And the guy will stand there. He say, where is my boy? The mother will say, what is happening? But nothing can touch you because your mother is there. The presence of your mother is there. If he can beat 100 children, he can't touch you because he knows that there is a fire in every mother. No matter how strong you are, you carry weight. When a child runs to the mother, you dare not touch that child. So when God said, I will be with you, it means go and misbehave. It means go and put the devil to shame. It means go and get result. I am standing behind you. Have you seen some people when they misbehave in the office or in relationship, you will wonder, this one that looks so fragile, but people with wisdom will know, it's not this one. There is somebody behind. I want you to know that as you go today, there is a God standing behind you. There is a God with you. When the enemy comes, you don't need to waste time with the enemy. Just point the enemy to the God that is standing behind you. Hallelujah. Now Jesus chose 12 disciples. He trained them. One-on-one -on -one training. On-the-job training offline training they were led because he wanted them to be like him now at the end of the day after he has trained them for three years they've seen everything he has done they made mistake he corrected the mistake you remember there was a time they were praying they could not cast out the demon they said lord how come we could not cast out the demon and he helped them he corrected them only this can only go by prayer and fasting he helped them but now, after three years of intensive training, 
And knowing that they are supposed to take over the assignment. Knowing that Jesus has chose these disciples and said, you are in partnership with me. I am here to bring life in abundance to people. But I am going. You need to continue in this partnership. He told them in Matthew 28 from verse 19. He said, go therefore, make disciples of all nations. Baptize them. Teach them. And he said, Lo, I am always with you. Even to the end of the age. He said, I am with you. So when you are in partnership with God, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Anyone who is in partnership with God must not feel lonely or feel alone. You cannot feel lonely and feel alone if you know that God is with you. And we mentioned that any time God wants to do something, he looks for a man to partner with. He told Moses, I want to deliver the people. Partner with me, so I will send you. And when the man says yes, he begins to partner with him. But one thing is this. When he sent you on the assignment, when Jesus was sending the twelve on that assignment, he knows for fact that that assignment is bigger than them. He knows that they are too small for that assignment. So as a result, what he does is to empower everyone that comes into partnership with him. Because he knows in your own power, you can do nothing. Jesus said in John chapter 15, he said, without me, you can do nothing. But now Jesus is going. And he said, go and make disciples. I will be with you. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? He made them to understand that I will empower you. And how does he empower in this instance? That empowerment is done through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. So after Jesus told them, go and make disciples. And he knew they would not be able to do it on their own. He knew the devil will, 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 will scare them. He knows there will be a lot of agenda of the enemy that will frustrate them. Say, I will empower you. So he told them in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He said, you shall receive empowerment. You shall receive power. You shall receive the ability to do beyond your human comprehension. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, then you will go and be my witness. Hallelujah. So he said, when you stay in Jerusalem, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Then you shall be what? Empowered. This morning, the Lord is going to empower somebody. You shall be anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. You shall receive fresh oil this morning. The oil that will carry you through this journey in partnership is coming upon you in this service. In the name of Jesus, the divine empowerment that will bring God's power and glory to manifest in your life, in your family, in the nation, is coming upon you today in the name of Jesus. In this service, God is releasing new gifts. Is releasing new talents. You will begin to do great exploits. In this, you have been thinking, I think I want to do that. You will be able to do it from this moment. You will no longer window shop. In the journey of life, you will no longer window shop. Ah, somebody. You see, when you don't have money, you desire that dress, you will win the show. And you will think, if I put this on, I, I, I will look beautiful. But unfortunately, I don't have the money. I want that golden wristwatch, but I don't have. Then you start window shopping. You'll be checking, you'll be checking. In the, in the partnership with God, there are things you want to do. Lord, I want to win so for you, but I don't have the capacity. You begin to win the show. I want to pray for the sick, and I want them to be healed, but you don't have the capacity. You win the show. From today, your window shopping has come to an end. When you are financially empowered, you walk 
talking to the son, you point and say, give to me. Yeah. Do you know that when you are loaded with money, people who are loaded with money don't spend much time in the shop. Yes. Do you know that? Yes. It is when your money is not enough, you spend time in the shop. They will tell you, this one is 3,005. Where is another one that looks like this? They say, no, no, this one, we give you a discount. No, I want that one. When they remove the discount, it's 3,200. You check your pocket. The soul is willing, but the pocket is weak. So in, in partnership with God, when you are not empowered, there are things you want to do. You say, only if we can do this. We will glorify God. So you begin to win the shop, you think about it. Ah, but today it has come to an end. You shall be empowered today and you shall do what God has called you to do in the name of Jesus. Many of you from today, you will venture into new things. You will venture into new things. I see incredible enlargement. I see incredible enlargement because God wants to be glorified and he will use you for his glory in the name of Jesus. Many of you will see our prophetess is singing. Oh, she take us to worship. I want to do that, but I don't think I can do that. I see the people displaying. Ah, only if I can do the drama. And in your heart, you will be doing like this, doing like this. Ah, today receive that empowerment. You will do it in the name of Jesus. So he empowers us through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every child of God in partnership with God needs this anointing. Amen. This anointing will make you to be effective in work with God. It will make you to walk with that struggle. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus himself. Who is God? 100% God, 100% man. When he came on earth, he needed to be anointed. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says, Jesus was empowered. He was anointed with Holy Ghost and with power. This enabled him to go around doing good works. It enabled him to destroy the works of the enemy. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has empowered me. And when he received that empowerment, he went around doing good. What is that good? Is the deeds of his father that glorifies God. Is the deed that points people to God in heaven. Is letting his light shine so that people can see and glorify his father in heaven. From this day you shall be empowered. Your light will shine. Your light will shine. People will see your light in the name of Jesus. You shall be anointed with the Holy Ghost. You shall be anointed with power in the name of Jesus. You will go around doing what you are called to do. No more limitation. No more frustration in the name of Jesus. Maybe you have been producing but you are moving to a new level. Amen. Amen. When you will produce to the glory of God, the result that will make people not to deny your existence and your God will start to manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. A man who is empowered by God in this partnership cannot be frustrated and can never be a casualty. Ah, you will not be a casualty in your journey with God. Many people started on this journey with God. They say yes to God in this partnership, but something happened that the Holy Spirit left them. They become incapable. And they became the casualty of the enemy. And when they look at their life, they say, I am not what I used to be. That shall not be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Jesus.
Jesus told his disciples, wait. Wait on the promise in Jerusalem. Jesus knew on their own they will not be effective. They will not be effective at all. Because he knows the enemy will throw a lot around them and to them. But he said, wait. Acts 1, 8. You will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will do what I've asked you to do. You will notice that after they were empowered, Peter, who denied Jesus three times, was able to stand and was able to bear fruit. His first message after empowerment brought 3,000 to the kingdom of God. And this was a man who could not stand a young girl who said, I knew you. He ran away. Why? Because he has not received the empowerment. Many of you have the opportunity to witness to people. You know this soul is perishing. But you say, if I open my mouth, will they not laugh at me? I can't tell them about Christ. It's because you've not been empowered. Because a man who is, he is empowered by the Holy Spirit, a man who received the anointing, is on fire. You cannot keep quiet. You are on fire for God. You are like a bouncing ball. You just want to talk about Jesus. You just want to speak about his goodness. You just want to testify. Hey, if we part them with these people, not even be angry. 
So we have to ask, is it the only thing? Are, are we allowed to pass there? No, no, you can park there. We enter, they scan you, they do everything. You think somebody will carry a bomb. How will you escape those people? That is your position. Amen. You are like that president. And the angels surround you. When you are anointed, the devil has no access. It is the only access you give to him that will come. Hallelujah. Ah, from today, that empowerment is coming upon you. That anointing that blessed you is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus. See, when you are anointed, when you are empowered by the Holy Spirit, so many products will be coming and be manifesting in you. Because when the anointing comes, divine elements for success in ministry, in life, in partnership will be invested on you. Those divine elements you need, the one you know how to use and the one you don't know how to use, they will be invested in you. Why? Because God is at work. You are just a vessel. This investment of divine element will help you to fulfill destiny. And today I prophesy over somebody, you shall fulfill destiny. You shall fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus. Then he said, he anoints my head with oil, and my cup runs over. When the anointing comes upon you, it begins to guide your path. If God makes you to be a doctor, you won't end up being a carpenter. You will not miss road. I pray for every young people here. You will receive this empowerment. You will not miss road. You will not marry the wrong person. You will not enter the wrong profession. You will not enter wrong job. In the name of Jesus. When you receive this empowerment and the anointing come, this anointing is the vaccine for a child of God against the shame of life. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. When the anointing comes, you are empowered. You have received vaccine from heaven that shame cannot manifest in your life. Pain cannot manifest in your life. Failure cannot manifest in your life. is not in the business of failing. He never fails. So if he calls you into partnership, that partnership can never fail. The ship of that partnership will not sink because God is at work. I see God walking through you. I see God walking in you. In the name of to begin to get yourself ready. Yes. You need to get your mind ready because we are going to pray. Yes. There is a level where God will say, I want to use that one. He said, this hour. I said, go and anoint. But today, the Lord took me to the book of Acts chapter 2. The Bible says, when they were gathered in unity, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost himself anointed them. Today, I am not doing the anointing. The Holy Ghost is doing the anointing. The Holy Ghost is doing the anointing. Because on that day, no priest came to pour oil. No pastor came to. He said, just wait there. And while they were waiting, what were they doing? I believe they were not chatting. They were not talking about Telemundo. They were not talking about uh, South African idols. They were not talking about the party. They were not talking about things happening around. They were waiting on him. Their focus was in heaven. They were worshiping. They were waiting on the promise. And today the Lord said, the Holy Ghost is coming down. As they worship me, the Holy Ghost is coming down. He will come down on each and every one. And he will anoint you himself. He will empower you in the mighty name of Jesus. Before we pray, I want you to take this note. As you receive this anointing, don't 
lose the most important thing in your life. The Bible said in Acts 10 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good because God was with him. Because God was with him. The presence of God in you is what will activate and attract the anointing and empowerment to come upon your life. Don't lose the presence of God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. That power is coming upon you today, but don't lose the presence of God. What was it that distinguished Joseph among other prisoners? What made him to have success? The Bible said, Joseph, don't be a prisoner. Had great success. And he gave us the reason because God was with him. You can't receive this empowerment and walk out and go out of God. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide by the shadow of the Almighty. We shall say, Oh, the Lord is my strength and my fortress, my Lord in whom I trust. Don't lose the presence of God. Don't allow peer pressure take you away from the presence of God. Don't allow challenges to take you away from the presence of God. Don't let what people tell you take you away from the presence of God. Jesus was anointed with Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. He could not have gone around doing good after receiving the Holy Ghost and power. This thing was working because the presence of God was with him. Get your mind ready and we're going to pray. And I tell you as the Lord spoke, things will start to happen. Monday, Libros, the presence of God. I want to use this example. No matter how expensive your cell phone is, no matter how much you have, if you disconnect your connect your 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 card from telecom or net uh, MTC, you will not be able to do what the phone is meant to do. If you go out of where there is network coverage, no matter how powerful your phone is, no matter how much you have loaded on your car, if there is no network coverage, you cannot function. God is loading you with great power today. Amen. Don't move out of his network coverage. Amen. Don't move out. Because a phone of 50,000 that is out of network coverage cannot stand beside a Chinese phone that is connected. You won't be able to call. You will know this phone can connect to YouTube. I can do what's hard. I can do everything. TikTok. What is it you do, young people again? Instagram. Uh, Telegram. All the grams. You know you can do it. But what is happening? You are not connected. God will keep his part this morning. He's going to release it upon you as you go out in this partnership. Doing great thing for God. Remain connected. Let's rise up on our feet if you can. And at the end of the day, I will just pray for us all. Hallelujah.
they can say to me.